Uh, watch labrats.tv. This is Roger saying it. Ah! <laughs>I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the Marshmallow edition of Lab Rats. This week, the Blowtorch edition. What is this? I I'm know. scared already. Absolutely. We've got fire and uh, marshmallows. It's like a big, great big campfire here today. A geek campfire. Yes, sir. We're going to show you how optical discs work. And I have to apologize in advance because we're going to show you how CDs and DVDs work using marshmallows and fire. And I've done this before, haven't I, Sean? I was going to say, this sounds awfully familiar. Way back in the day when I was uh, hosting Call for Help, uh, I did do this demo, but I had three minutes. They gave me three minutes to do these things, and now we have 15 minutes. So we're not only going to cover uh, CDs, DVDs, but also the next generation of DVDs called Blu-ray and HD DVD. Mm -hmm. And we talk about burnables and non-burnables and commercials and blah, 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 but let's get to it. Everything optical. Everything optical. Let's go. Before we start, though, uh, I think we should probably plug my, plug my book. Oh, it's not an episode of Lab Rats with a book plug. Da, 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 da. Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security, Spam, Spyware, and Viruses is my book. It's got nothing to do with this episode, but, you got know, rats. hey. You've hey, got rats. I love these rats, here. by the way. Anyway, but screw the rats for a second. My book, go buy it. Amazon.ca, Amazon.com, Amazon.co.uk, uh, and all major bookstores. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's get rolling. Okay. Um, so... Sean, tell me a little bit about CDs and DVDs. How do they work? Pits and bumps, lands, blah, blah, blah. Well, you basically covered it right there. Um, essentially, a laser will hit the disc. Right. Well, let's get a disc for illustration here. So a laser will laser. hit the disc from the top, and there will be either a pit or a bump, right. uh, which represents a zero or a one. So either you have the, the flat area, you have a flat area right. where the, the light, oops, the light bounces off. That's the problem with marshmallows, is they're a bit sticky. Yeah. Right? Or you have a bump right next to it, which actually is an elevated area. So what happens is when the light comes in from the laser, it, it reflects in a different kind of way. Mm -hmm. so and and then it has, there's, there's actually a second head that actually reads it. Mm -hmm. And that will, you know, the, the level of reflection is, is basically the way whether it's a one or a zero. Right. And then in the end, the processor inside the DVD player, the CD player, will reassemble those uh, zeros and ones into strings and then words and then into the music or video that you hear or see. That's right. So, and that's sort of commercially bought DVDs. Like, for example, I got a, we've got a copy here of uh, Say Anything with uh, John Cusack. And I think we have a, that's, this is of course yeah. a DVD, a commercially yeah. bought DVD. This is Erasure's uh, ABBA-esque, I believe. Yes. So that, and that's a commercially bought CD. So what happens in, during the manufacturing process when you buy one of these guys is it comes pre-formatted with either flat bits or bumpy bits. Yes, they stamp them. Exactly. Now, things work slightly different in the world of burnables, uh, CDR. CDRW or plus minus R and, and plus RW, uh, both on the CD side and the DVD side. And I've got a little treat for you. Let me show you how that works. Look, it's a marshmallow wheel. Marshmallow wheel. Yes. In fact, it's this is uh, my effort at uh, Arts and Crafts. Um, this is a simulated track that contains actually uh, media that can be burned from uh, by a laser on either a CD burner. Actually, we'll start with CDs. We're gonna, we're, let's just say this is a CD minus R disc. So, Sean, if you hold that for a second. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a laser, and we are going to turn it on. I'm going to hide behind the shield here. Turn it down just a little bit here. Oops. There we go, just a little bit. There we go. Look at that. All right. So this. Oops. This right Sorry. here will represent the uh, the CD in its unburned form. All of these right now are zeros. What? All of these are zeros. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's scaring me now. Okay, so each of these are zeros. They're unformatted pits, or they're, they're not the, pits. They're yet. actually media. Yeah, they're they're, they're actually a substrate that it can actually be affected by by energy, actually by heat. So what happens is the head just decides to write a one, and so what's going to do is obscure the marshmallow, one of the marshmallow services, like this. It's going to come in. Oh, and look at that. So what's happened there, as you can see, if you close in on that geo for a second, is that it's actually obscured the substrate and changed the color. So next time that the head comes along and it reads that, DV, that surface, there, it's going to reflect light in a different way, and therefore they read it as a one. All right, so you might ask, how does 
How does? <laughs> How does? Okay, so we've, we've, seen, does this, we've seen CDR. So this is burn once. Right. How does CDRW work? Well, here's how CDRW works. There is, um, it has a, something called a multi-phase. These guys here are multi-phase alloys, a slightly different uh, material in, in RW, which means you read it and then you can erase it. And what happens is, the, uh, so what, once again, you will burn the surface of one of these marshmallows, and it will, because the heat will, will kind of obscure, go, to go from a crystalline state into something that actually reflects light in a different way. Now, to turn it back into sort of the regular format before, unobscured, you apply a different level of heat onto that same surface and it will convert back. Ah. So the alloy is actually, it looks like the same material on the CDR and CDR minus, uh, plus R, uh, CDR or CDRW, they look like the same, but actually the material in them that changes state is actually different. Right, so one burns once and that's it. The other one can go back and forth. That's exactly and, it. And it can go back and forth, I believe, about a thousand times. About a thousand times or so. I mean, actually, you know, this is something I'd, be like, I'd like to see in the lab being done, but that's typically the industry will tell you that's about a thousand rewrites uh, on an RW and that sort of thing. So that's how it goes. Now, the question is, you know, in the case of a CD, how much data can we fit onto a CD, Sean? A uh, CD depends on the exact model of blank CD that you have. Yeah. Typically, you're looking at about 650 for the standard CD, what you are talking about when you go and get a CDR. Uh, there's some that have 700, some that have even 800. Uh, those aren't necessarily compatible with all of the different types of readers and burners out there. So. And that's megabytes, right? That's megabytes. So that's, you know, between three quarters, between, uh, was well, more than half and about three quarters of a gigabyte of data you can put onto a CD, or a rewritable, or a, or a, a, a you know, minus R plus R minus RW plus RW. Right. But, so the question is, how do we uh, take a DVD and burn that? And the answer to that is you make the surfaces, in, instead of having a big fat uh, surface like that, you actually make it smaller, right? Right, because the, the discs are the same size, so you'd have to cram it on That's somehow. Right. And as you can see here, what I've done is actually taken mini marshmallows, which are very tasty by the way, and we've actually created smaller surfaces. Now what happens is that light coming from that laser can be focused, and I'm going to turn this on again and hopefully not burn down that. I mean, just for the sake of argument, prevent Andy from uh, having to glue yeah. like a zillion of them on here. Just imagine that these are tightened up a lot. Right. So what's happening here, of course, is now, now you're tuning the laser a little bit more and you're going in and you're trying to just burn. Oh, see, I burned two there. Of course, this is too coarse. But the idea in a DVD burner is that that light that. is uh, actually focused so onto a smaller surface. And so you can actually fit yeah. more bits that can actually be. Yeah, so that won't do burned. using that same size laser. So you're no. changing both the bits and the size of the laser that's hitting them. That's right, exactly. Now, the, now and, and so what happens, because you can fit more surface area on a one disk, you get, was it 4.7 gigabytes worth of storage, I think, on a standard DVD. Right. And that translates into approximately, uh, I think it is about two hours worth of video on one disk. But of course, most movies, Hollywood movies, are two hours, sometimes more than that. Of course, with all, all those extras, we need more space. So what do you do then? I think uh, probably it would be uh, best to add another layer here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you turn it into a sandwich. So what happens is you will. So you'll use the layer and you'll and you'll burn uh, one layer of this the CD or the DVD, and then you'll add a second layer on top. Kind of. I'll take one more of these uh, these marshmallows here. Yeah, let's pretend this and is the so, DVD now. So, so this is a DVD, okay? And then so what will happen is there'll be another layer of sort of a substrate in here, and then there'll be uh, another series of marshmallows that can be burned as well. And what happens is you, you, you change the angle of your laser to yeah. focus either on the bottom layer or the top layer. This refocuses right through the, uh, the top layer into the bottom layer. Right, because it's semi-transparent. Yeah, and so, this is why marshmallows aren't necessarily ideal because you can't see through them uh, when you refocus, but you know. I've always wanted enough. to do that with Jell-O, but of course in Jell-O is a whole different media. It's hard to work with. <laughs> We've got Jell-O coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, finally I want to talk a little bit about um, oh, Matt wants a marshmallow. Anybody else want a marshmallow in the studio? Here you go. Hey, you wake up. <laughs> Here you go. Anyway. Hey, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Here, Beth. There you go, Beth. Oh, he likes them. Actually, you know what? The, the cats have been attacking the marshmallows all day. It's pretty funny. All right. I see even smaller bits here. Yeah. So, so what I did was, um, and I couldn't buy any, any smaller mini marshmallows, so I actually went out and got some Tic Tacs. Right? If you check out the Tic Tacs here, um, the idea being that let's, on the next generation of DVDs, and they're called Blu-ray disc or HD DVD. Right. Now, the difference between uh, DVD and Blu-ray or HD is we, again, need more storage space on the disc. So how do we do that? 
Well, we turn this, the storage space again from a mini marshmallow down to a tic-tac, right? So look, how, look at the difference in, in space there. And in fact, the surface area of, a, of an area you would burn on a DVD compared to Blu-ray or HD is about five times. Tic-tacs and marshmallows may not be to scale. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, exactly. So, but of course, you cannot use a big, fat, coarse uh, um, flame or heat onto a tic-tac because you're just going to completely obliterate all of the tic-tacs all at once, which I should probably do, but I'm not going to. So the idea behind... Oh, please, can we burn things? Let's, <laughs> actually, we don't have too many of them on here. No, we don't. Uh, we, we really, Let's we're, do that at the well, end. Well, here, here no, I, have, I, have a mini, I have a mini blowtorch here. You can, can, probably right. can barely see. So the idea being that that blue laser, instead of a red laser, is going to be focused, and it's much tinier. It can affect, and I wonder if I can do this. Oh, yeah, I can. Check it out. Zoom in there, Geo. <laughs> so I've managed to actually melt. Whoa. Oh, my God, it's sizzling. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't know that they, uh, oh, it's on fire. <laughs> uh, that's not how Blu-ray works, although it perhaps prototypes are doing that all the time. I think the first few. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, the, the idea being that because there's such a small, so many smaller uh, bits of, uh, of area of the substrate that actually can be affected by the laser, and because the blue laser uh, can be fine-tuned such a small area for burning, you can fit more data again on the same size disk. Right, and, and again, uh, you can do them in multiple layers. So uh, HD DVD will have 15 gigabytes on, on that. On Blue, a single layer. On a single layer. Blu-ray has 25. 25. Right. But you can double them up uh, right. as well. Uh, at this point, HD is available in up to three, I think, theoretically. So the idea being you have a layer and a layer, and then you flip it over, and you have one layer well, actually, on the Actually, th three in one direction, three, oh, is actually. that right? Right. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Blu-ray, on the other hand, will do two, and then two on the other side. Right, so up to 100 gigabytes on a disk, on a two-sided disk. Right, so you're looking at probably about 50 gigabytes is going to be the typical disk you'll see. Right. And that's now, still a lot of data. Now, question for you. Are we going to go through a, a VHS and beta war now, HD, DVD? Yes, we Blu are. Really? Yes, we are. Yeah. yeah, we talked with Andy Markin a couple weeks uh, back right. about this. Excellent. and. Uh, yes. And uh, that's definitely what's going to happen. Uh, we've got two warring camps uh, right now, uh, the Sony on one side and Toshiba on the other. Toshiba is with HD DVD, Sony's backing Blu-ray. Uh, Blu there's, 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 yeah, there's a lot of other people behind them. I'm not going right. to say that it's just those two companies. But then there's right. content providers as well lined up behind either side. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's like Super Audio CD and DVD Audio. It's the same sort of thing. You've got people on one side and people on the other side, and they're not quite making it work yet. So. I think that Blu-ray is going to win, ultimately. There's more capacity. And uh, I think the, the bigger players are, are backing it. Now, some people disagree with me, and there may be a war, mm -hmm. but I think... Yeah, the, the one interesting thing about that is Microsoft is backing HD DVD, and Microsoft generally does not back a the loser. loser. Hmm. I, I think Blu-ray does have the better specs. You know, v or VHS didn't uh, match up to beta, you know, but beta is now not used in most households. So oh, That's true. Good point. All right, well... That's it for uh, this edition of Lab Rats. I hope uh, you've uh, learned a couple things with our marshmallow demo and our uh, optical discs. Um, I would like to, to encourage you to go to our website, as always, at labrats.tv and uh, fill out our survey. Um, we're more and more of you are going there every day. And we just want to learn a bit, a bit about you, about who you are and uh, what you like and that sort of thing, so we can develop programming on this show a lot in the future. Is that tasty? Are you enjoying that? I think I got the glue side. <laughs> anyway, I think you got the glue side, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for us for at Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next week. If my mouth isn't glued shut. Mm -hmm. Fire it up. Fun. Burn those Tic Tacs. Watch my hand. Oh, yeah. Let's light the rats on fire. No! <laughs>
parts we're going to be covering uh, how optical disc discs work. That includes CD, DVD, uh, Blu-ray, and which, which of course is the next generation DVD, and HD DVD. Ah, oh, so many things, so many acronyms, so little time. And Andy, you're not as excited as you are when the cameras are actually rolling. No, that's because my it's my television personality. So that's right. So uh, today we're gonna burn things. We're gonna burn things because it's so much fun. Burn, burn, fire good. No, fire good. Go, Andy. One, two, one, two.